Okay, so in this lesson, we're gonna go over some of the basic probability rules and use them to calculate the chances of certain events occurring. And then we're also gonna be working with two-way tables and then diagrams and use them to represent and model probability, you know, and, you know, certain scenarios. And we can also use them to like calculate probabilities. All right, so first let's go over some of the basic definitions that we use in probability. So first we have what's called a sample space. So the sample space is essentially the set of all possible outcomes. Just think of it as like the universe of everything. And, you know, in math, we always have, you know, a certain way to represent this. Usually, you know, your teacher or professor will, you know, maybe just draw a rectangle and draw, you know, S. And inside this rectangle will, you know, lie every possible thing that can happen and, you know, whatever problem you're dealing with. Sometimes, or you could draw an oval, but the sample space is just the, the um, universe of everything you could think of. Now, when we are, you know, dealing with, you know, probability problems, we want to be able to model them, you know, in a mathematical way. So we need to have a model that consists of two parts. That's going to be the sample space, which is, again, is going to show or represent all the possible things that could occur. We say outcomes and events. And then, we also need to calculate the probability for each of those possible outcomes. So let's go through an example problem because again, that's always the best way to really understand this stuff. So let's, let's start with a typical, you know, coin flipping scenario. So we're gonna imagine that we're flipping a coin three times, you know, we get heads or tails and we wanna make a probability model that you know shows everything that can occur so all the set of outcomes and the probability of each of those outcomes so here we can just use a simple table and one row we're just going to write the possible outcomes like this we'll have and it's going to be you know um different you know depend on the problem but in this case since we're flipping a coin three times since we were you know we typically can get heads or tails we want to write all the possible combinations of heads and tails we can get by flipping a coin three times so you know probably one of the most obvious is that you can get all three heads so we will say heads 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 you can get heads on each toss Another combination could be um, you get heads, heads on the first two tosses and then it tails on the last one. Another one could be heads, then tails, tails. So heads on the first toss and it tails and tails on the second and third. Or you can then get all tails. So tails, tails, tails. Or you can get a tails first and then a heads and a heads on the second and third. Or you can get a tails first, then a heads, and then a tails. Or you can get a tails, tails, and a heads. And the last one is heads, tails, heads. Now we're gonna um, learn later on on how we can actually determine all the possible outcomes mathematically in case you know you know you can maybe you know figure them all out just by thinking because we're going to be dealing with much more complicated scenarios but don't worry we'll get to that now in this column below or the row below we just write the probability of each of them occurring now it just so happens since this is a fair coin and there's a 50 percent chance of getting heads on each toss or 50 percent chance of getting heads and 50 percent chance of getting tails on each toss since there's eight total possibilities, there is a one eighth chance of each of these events occurring. Or you can write as a decimal by 0.125. And again, we're gonna learn later on how we can actually calculate these values because you know it's not always gonna be easy to just you know figure them out, you know, off the top of our heads. 
but for now we just want to learn the, um, the basics of you know how we represent um, a probability model. Okay, so now you know that being said, yeah, as I probably already mentioned a couple of times, you probably already heard me say the term event. An event is kind of just what you would, you know, similar to what you think in everyday talk. It's any collection of outcomes from some chance process. It, it could, um, in this case, represent these. These are all the events that could happen in this, you know, in this sample space, in this scenario. And usually we can like represent an event, you know, with capital letters, A, B, C. So, you know, maybe we could just say like an A represents that, a B represents that. And again, it depends on a scenario but this is just a common notation that we're used to using in, in probability talk. Okay, so let's look at another um, practice problem to again, help us understand the stuff much better. So let's look now, we have two events defined here where event A is, you know, the sum is five and event B is the sum is six. And we're told that we're gonna roll a pair of fair dice once. And so what's the probability event A? So um, do make sure that you are familiar with, you know, basic, you know, um, games, like, you know, what, you know, a die has, you know, six sides, make sure you know your deck, make sure you know what a deck of cards consists of, that sort of thing, because it's gonna be, you know, kind of assume that you're gonna know that you should, you're, that you should know. Okay, so, um, so remember, uh, if, a, if a, you know, a fair die, then it's gonna have six sides with you know, numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six on each side. And since they're rolling two of them, we just have two dies you know, with you know, the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. So one way to represent this, so we can figure out this calculation easier, is to draw um, this basically a uh, row column table. It's, it's kind of grid because again, um, you may not, you know, want you may be able to figure it off the top of your head, but it's not recommended, um, especially when you start dealing with more complicated scenarios. Because think, you can maybe think, oh, what numbers out of the five? One, you know, and four, two, and three, you know, then. Uh, then uh, five and zero, but there's no zero, so that's it. So then um, let's make sure we always draw a diagram so we can make sense of what we're dealing with because sometimes the answer may seem obvious, but it's not always as obvious as you may initially come up with. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna represent die one on one side or on, the, on this row across. So these will be the numbers on die one. We'll have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we'll have die two be represented across here. And let's actually use a different colored pen. It still has those same six numbers, but you know, it's occurring on a different die. So that, you know, it's unique. So what we do is then, you know, create a grid made by the intersections of these numbers. So, so what we do here now is in here, we put whatever makes sense in the problem to help us solve it. So, um, since we're looking at, you know, the sum is five and the sum is six, we're gonna basically make these interior values be the sum of the corresponding value, the sum of the corresponding numbers on the dies. So we, let's call this a sum table. So let me actually put these colors and put this in pink to the thing. One, two, three, four, so what, what goes here is if one comes up on die one and one comes up on die two, those add up to two. So we have a two here. Here we have a two and then a one, so we get a three. 
a three and a one, four, four and a one, five, five and one, six, six and one, seven. Next row, this will be a one on die one, but a two on die two. Three, two and a two, four, three and a two, five, four and a two, six, five and a two, seven, six and two, eight. Next one, a one and a three on die two. I think you can get the picture, so I'm just gonna power through this now. One and a four. One and a five. And a one and a six. So with this diagram, it's much easier, easier to see exactly what combinations of values you'll have when you add the, you know, when you add, you know, the sum of the, of the number of die one and die two up, it's really gonna allow you to you know, answer these problems much easier. Plus you can pick up on patterns quicker. So, um, so let's, going back to the question, if you were to roll each pair of die once, What's the probability of event A? So what's the probability of the sum is a five? So let's write over here the probability that sum is, we love it, sum is equals five, or the probability of A. We just use the simple, you know, kindergarten math. We look at there's all these possible combinations. And you would get, you know, add them all up. You get there's 36 possible combinations that can happen. So out of these 36, how many fives do you have? You have one, two, three, four. So we just say the probability that the sum is five is just four out of 36. Or we can say just one and nine. Now the probability of so the sum is, or no, I think if the sum is six, probability sum is five is one out of nine. Now so the probability that the sum is six, or the probability of B, you just count how many sixes there are. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's five sixes. So five out of 36. Now, since we're trying to figure out the probability of event A or B, we basically just have to add these, these fractions up, you know, because there's, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total ways that you can satisfy event A or B. So let's go ahead and write the probability of A or B is just equal to nine out of 36. Or you can write one fourth. And that's all there is to that.